Sisters and subscribers, my name is Don. I want to do an important video of, as the title suggests. Where do all wicked thoughts and desires come from? They, and they come from the heart. The heart is the seat of all desires and emotions. You know, and we are told to safeguard the heart because all, as I said, all desires and evil lusts originate from our heart, and there, from there we can, it can cause evil thoughts, you know, in our minds. In turn, you know, if you are not strong enough, you can act on them. But whether they originally, how come we, we have this, you know, this sinful nature where does it all come from as Paul says it comes back from the garden of Eden where this is it where we were corrupted by Satan as it says Paul says speaking to uh, in Ephesians chapter 2 1 to 3 and you were dead in your trespasses and sins which in time passed to you time past you walked according to the course of this world according to the prince of the power of the air the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience among whom also we all lived then in the lusts of our flesh fulfilling the desires of the flesh and the, on the and of the mind and were by nature the children of wrath even as others the word flesh according to this article used in this context is our fallen human nature. Adam and Eve had sinned against God and so their human natures were corrupted. You know, because they listened to Satan in the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve became corrupted. That is they now had desires that were against God and his ways and that would arise from their own hearts because they're being corrupted by Satan because they listened to Satan and they had to turn away from these desires on an early daily basis. All their children, and that includes us, born after them have corrupted sinful natures with evil desires that arise in them. So we're, we're really born with these evil desires because we were corrupted in the Garden of Eden, inherited from Adam and Eve. Those desires can cause evil thoughts in our, their minds. As unbelievers, we were all enslaved to those desires. This means that they directed our actions because we submitted ourselves to the desires. Our regular pattern of life was dominated by our desires. And, and in, you know, in turn, we, we, we turned away from God. And so, you know, what do you call it? As it says in, in Matthew 15, 19, as I said, the seat of all wicked uh, emotions and desires and thoughts originate from the heart. And it, as it says in uh, Matthew 15, I'll go, I'll go for 18. However, the things proceeding out of the mouth comes out of the heart. Those things defile a man. For example, out of the heart comes wicked reasoning, see? Wicked thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thievery, false testimonies, blasphemes. These are the things defiling a man. But to take a meal with unwashed hands does not defile a meal. No. So, you know, out of the things proceeding out of the mouth comes from the heart. Even, even wicked reasonings, you know. And Mark 7, 20. Which says... For he said to, to 
says it quite clearly in Matthew 15, you know, 19, for out of the heart comes wicked reasonings, wicked thoughts. And now Mark 7, 18 to 22, and he, Jesus said to them, his disciples, are you also without understanding? Do you not perceive that whatever comes from without and from without and enters into the man cannot defile him because it does not enter into his heart but into the stomach and is eliminated out of the body he said what comes out of the man is that the fosmount from for from within out of the heart of men proceeds evil thoughts so it originates from here adulteries so from there evil thoughts and then you can you can do it in other words and sin adulteries fornications murders thefts covetousness wickedness deceits envy blasphemy pride foolishness all these things come from within and defile a man so the evil desires and thoughts in human beings come from our flesh and they have risen from our fallen nature because born with it because of adam and eve passed on to their children The Bible warns us about, you know, the hearts, you know, and uh, where the, because of the sin, a writ can, you know, sinful thoughts can come from there. This is in Jeremiah 17, 9 to 10, which says, The heart is more treacherous than anything else and is desperate. Who can know it? I, so God, Yahweh, am searching the heart, examining the kin kidneys, even to give each to each one according to his ways, according to the fruitage of his dealings. We will all be judged according to our deeds. And he's examining the heart. See? The heart is warning us. The heart is more treacherous, you know, than anything else. And uh, Psalm 14, 1, The senseless one has said in his heart, There is no God, Yahweh. They have acted ruinously. They have acted detestably in their dealings. You know, and, and it tells us Proverbs 14, 4, 23. 423 says, More than all else that is to be guarded safeguard your heart for out of it are the tr sources of life so see so more than anything else we we're, we're told bad things originate thoughts and desires come from the heart it says in it you know in proverbs it says safeguard your heart more than all else that is to say be guarded safeguard your heart for out of it are the sources of life yeah, and you know, if and also, but if you do not, if you carry on on doing bad things, you know, mixing with bad people, and you know, concentrating on bad things, it it can lead to lead to death. So it says, safeguard your hearts. You know, and for instance, you know, once an evil thought goes into someone's heart. You know where it originates from, like then goes into your minds. You know, uh, what, uh, let me see, like that, like what happened to Judas, who betrayed Jesus. Let me see, John, John fourteen, John thirteen two. So while the evening meal was going on, the devil, having already put it into the heart of Judas Iscariot the son of Simon, to betray him, to betray Jesus. Once, you know, it goes into your heart. You know, the desire, then, you know, he acted upon it. Judas Iscariot. See, it says here, the devil having already put it into his heart. So Judas then went away and, and you know, betrayed Jesus. So we must safeguard the hearts. You know, out of which, you know, comes evil thoughts and all sorts of, you know, 
fornication and murder and strife and jealousy and the seat of desires and emotions. In, in fact, I read an article which says, uh, what do you call it, the, the heart is more clever than the brain. And, you know, let me read just a little. This is it. This, you, this is it. You see, your heart is much wiser than your brain. You know, I always thought that the brain was the most wise thing. This article says, most people, then, when faced with a difficult decision, they, they go to their brain. But most, but most people believe their intelligence comes from the brain. But that's not the case. You see, your heart is, more, is the most powerful intelligence in your body. This is most intelligent. Your heart is the intelligence that comes before your brain. Most people don't know that. Yes, the heart started be beating before the brain existed. So the intelligence that created your body and your brain is your heart. Is it? We form an emotional brain long before we form a rational one and a, and a beating heart before either. Research, listen to this, research shows the heart has 60 times the energy, more energy, or electrical impulses coming out of the brain you know, it does. So now you can understand how your heart dramatically impacts your brain, how it works, not the other way around. So, so the research shows that the heart has 60 times more energy coming from your brain. You know, uh, 60 it shows the heart has 60 times more energy coming out from your brain. So it says it shows that the the heart is supposed to be more intelligent, but the suit of the, the seat of all desires, see, we are warned uh, against this. Let me read some scriptures. What we can, what we can do. Uh, Paul gives us a clue what we should do. He says, uh, "Call it in Galatians five sixteen to twenty one." This I say then, walk by the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh, for the flesh lusts against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary to one another, so that you cannot do the things that you would. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, fornication, uncleanness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, strife, jealousy, wrath, rivalries, divisions, envies, drunkenness, revelings, and such things like these of which I told you before, that they do not do the things, whoever do such things shall not inherit God's kingdom. We have to walk by the Spirit, you know, and uh, the Satan, he tries his very best to uh, incite our fleshy desires through the unbelieving world <laughs> you know around us how does he do that to turn how to turn away from your fleshy desires so how do we turn away from your fleshy desires well you need to commit yourself to follow God's moral standards as revealed in the scriptures and turn away from your sinful desires and uh, also as it says in Psalm 51, this is uh, verse 10, and this is King David, who you know, though he sinned, he 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 he, he repented in Psalm 51 to God, and it says, "Create in me, in me, even a pure heart." O oh God, and put within me a new spirit, a steadfast one. So he prayed, as we should, pray to give yourself a clean heart, a pure heart. And uh, also 14, 7, deliver me from blood guilt, O oh God, O oh God of my salvation, that my tongue may joyfully tell about your righteousness. 
God, oh God, may you open these lips of mine that my own mouth may tell forth your praise. For you, for you do not take delight in sacrifice other than I would give. In whole burnt offering you do not find pleasure. The sacrifice to God are a broken spirit, a heart broken and crushed of oh God, and you I will not despise. So basically, you know, he prayed here to repent. He, he repented to God and asked God for a, to God for a, a, a pure, a clean heart. So we should pray to God to give us strength, to get a, give us a, a clean heart, and to read the scriptures. To you know, so we'll. It will help us to live godly lives, to turn away from the sins of the flesh. We are told to read the Bible, you know, as a, as a source of life, to, to, to guide us on, you know, how we can get a clean heart. Read the Bible and memorise it, as it says here in Proverbs 3, 1-5. to My son, my Lord, do not forget and my commandments may your heart observe because length of days and years of life and peace and will be added to you so is of benefit may loving kindness and shrewdness themselves not leave you tie them about your throat write them upon the tablet of your heart you see write them as it were you know physical uh, you know spiritually speaking memorize them and so, and to find favour and good insight in the eyes of God and of earthly men, trusting God Yahweh with all your heart, and do not lean upon your own understanding. So you know, put write them upon the tablet of your heart, so so you know how what to avoid. You know, sinful you know things of the flesh, because once they the desires go in your heart. You know, if you watch something bad or hear something bad, it go. You know, goes in your heart, and your thoughts, and you act upon it. As it says in, uh, let me see, verse two, two Timothy, two verse twenty-two. Flee also youth, youthful lusts, but follow righteousness, faith, love, peace. With them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. So flee. You mean, you know, escape, avoid, run away from your fleshy desires. We need to flee physically, mentally, and spiritually, emotionally. Flee physically, mentally, and emotionally. We need to avoid stirring these desires up, you know, in us. Let us, and it says in Romans 13, 13 to 14, let us walk honestly as in a day, not in rioting and drunkenness, and not in sexual promiscuity and wantonness, not in strife and envying, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the, for the flesh to fulfil its lust. So we need to avoid stirring desires in us. You know, if you know it's going to, stir desires in you don't go to these you know nightclubs you know or places where you know you can give in to these desires as it says make not provision for the flesh to fulfill its lusts you know drunkenness or sexual promiscuity so you know run away it says let us walk honestly in a day not in rioting and drunkenness. So you've got to be very careful to turn away from them. You know, to put the Lord Jesus Christ and not make provision for the flesh to fulfill its lusts. So we are to avoid making provision for the flesh. You know, mean in avoid an opportunity where, you know, that these fleshy desires can be fulfilled. You know, so very, very good uh, advice in Romans thirteen thirteen. So if you know people 
uh, you know, bad people. You should uh, you should avoid bad people. You know, that talks. You know, always disgusting things. You know, with their mouth full. You know, always. Uh, and we are warned not to give in to lusts because it can lead to death. You know, uh, turning away from God and back into the world. You know. Uh, for this is here. James 1, 13 to 15. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither does he tempt anyone. But everyone is tempted when he is, he is drawn away from his own lust and enticed. And when he is drawn away by his own lust and enticed, because remember we were born, we were born with it, then the when the lust has been conceived, it brings forth sin, and in turn sin, when it's finished, brings forth death. But, you know, never let that happen, you know. You need to be strong. Put faith in Christ and Heavenly Father. Pray to Him for strength with the Holy Spirit to turn away from temptation as the Lord's Prayer said. Lead us not into temptation. You know, once in the scripture it says, in the Bible it says, if if we confess our sins, he is faithful and, and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Isn't that very good? So if we come before God, you know, he will give us strength to, to turn away from temptation and sin. If you ask him and... If you confess your sins through Jesus Christ, he will, will forgive your sins. And Ma Matthew, yeah, it says, uh, last two scriptures, uh, Matthew twenty-two thirty-seven. We are told to do this. He said to him, "You must love God Yahweh with God with your whole heart and with your whole soul." And with your whole mind. See, this is the greatest of the first commandments. If you love God with your whole heart, uh, you won't have any room to, to sin. You know, you're not part, love Him partially. So, with your whole heart. And again, last scripture uh, 5. Matthew 5 8, and I'll leave it like this. Happy are the pure in heart. Listen to this, since they will see God. So, isn't that wonderful? So, you know, read the Bible, pray to God for strength, and, you know, memorize the scriptures so, so we can remove the, the wicked desires that originate from the heart that go into mind and then act upon it. But what a wonderful hope. Happy are the pure of heart since they will see God. Anyway, you know, hope you like the video and please re you know, repent to God through Christ Jesus, Saviour. Thank you. God bless.